I decided to take part in this trip because I thought it would be a really great opportunity to go to Italy and sing for so many, so many different people and different cultures that I thought it would be a very, very interesting experience. I decided to take part in this trip before, because I thought it would be a good experience to go around and sing in different places and see other people's culture. I decided to take part in this trip because I thought it would be a great experience just to see something new and because I love to sing and it, I've never been to Italy so I was thinking that it would be really fun to do something like that. I decided to take part in this trip because um, it's first of all one in a lifetime chance for me because I'm not the richest people in my family so it's a big thing and just because the experience of going to a foreign country. <laughs> My name is Bailey Harris. It was crazy. These people drive like insane. So, my favorite part of visiting ancient Rome was the Trevi fountain. I just liked the sculptures and just how it was all. I just thought it was pretty, and just how one person or how, however many people could just make that was amazing. My name is Kristen Jones. I'm really looking forward to, forward to seeing the um, fountain, the, um, the, the great fountain that was built for like 100 years. It wasn't built for like 100 years, so I'd really like to see that. <laughs> they will be walking uh, where many famous men and women have walked and uh, had life experiences. They will be seeing art for the very first time, architecture that very, uh, not very many people in the world will see firsthand. I think this is a wonderful uh, cultural experience for them. Uh, these, to view these extraordinary artworks and, and uh, architectural uh, places. It was busy, they were, it was gorgeous. I had never really seen anything so like, I don't know if this was architectural, I guess. This trip came about um, probably since we established a pattern of traveling abroad starting in 2003. We traveled to Austria for a 10-day invitational uh, concert tour there in Austria. And then in 2005, we traveled to England for a 10-day concert tour there. And then we began to search out other possibilities for travel in 2007, worked, began to work with uh, Music Celebrations International, a tour company, and uh, arrived um, at um, the idea of going to Italy and stayed with that. We investigated several other places, but um, we decided that Italy was, was the best uh, location to visit this year. Cora, the good night. Si, 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 si. We are in Italy, so we say si. Maybe it's better if I sit down because we don't want I decided to take part in this trip because I thought it would be a good experience for me and I wanted to bring my grandma along because it might be one of the last years she could um, go out of the country. I decided to take part in this trip because I figured it'd be fun and I knew that we'd be seeing for the Pope it'd be a good adventure. Okay. 
Angeles. They're brave, you see, some of you remember St. Angel Castle. At the origin, if you see, the lower part is different. This was built by the Emperor Hadrian. It was his tomb for himself and his family. Here, the capital line here. Roman palaces. Naturally, you can imagine all of us extremely well decorated with marble, mosaics, marble, mosaics, statues, and everything. It was grandiose, of course. Remember, that is the real name, Flavian Amphitheater, after Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian, the three emperors who built the Colosseum starting from the 70 AD. So, the Colosseum is only a nickname, uh, um, coming probably after the colossal dimension of the building or after the colossus of Nero, a huge statue which was located right in front of the Colosseum. So, before the Colosseum was built, uh, this was uh, the house of uh, Nero. Now, if you look in front of us, you can see a huge arch. In a way, it has no connection with the Colosseum from a chronological point of view. We could say that the Colosseum is the symbol of the entertainment of the Roman world, is a symbol of pagan Rome, while the Arch of Constantine was built and dedicated to Constantine, the emperor who gave freedom of worship in 313. So in a way, do not misunderstand me, in a very broad way, it could be considered a symbol of Christianity just next to the symbol of the pagan world, which is exactly what Constantine wanted to happen, you see? This is my favorite corner for the simple reason that if you look in front of us, you can really see the different stages of the Colosseum, the different walls. Well, you will see better when we go inside that the Colosseum is not roundish as it looks from outside, but it's elliptical in shape. It is made of many concentric walls, which you can see from here. This is a part of the inner uh, section, and then you can see that the second wall and the first wall, the facade, as destroyed. They were mostly destroyed by earthquakes. There was a very bad one in the 14th century. That is when most of the blocks fell down. So they were taken or they were sold to make um, new buildings. Apparently part of the Vatican Palace has been built with the material taken from the Colosseum. <laughs> Jordan the Coliseum um, was very exciting because, like, it, we got I got to learn lots of like things about the Coliseum and stuff. I thought it was really interesting to get to tour the Coliseum in ancient Rome because it's been there for like 3,000 years and it's been standing for 3,000 years, so that's pretty incredible to me. And they also like filled it up with water and um, and put boats in there and. Today, people still don't know how they did it without damaging the Colosseum, so I thought that was really cool. The Palatine is one of the seven hills of Rome, and it is one of the most important ones. The Palatine was the exclusive quarter, really, of the Republican people. In imperial times, starting with Caesar Augustus, the Palatine started to be the residence of the Caesars. Um, Palatine is one of the, is the hill and is traditionally where Rome was actually founded. Um, Rome, Rome was founded by Romulus.
the Senate. Huh? As I said, uh, this is the Curia Julia, built by Julius Caesar, but reconstructed by Diocletian in the 4th century AD. It is very, very high because uh, there was a belief, uh, according to Vitruvius, who was one of the best architects of the antiquity, that the high buildings had uh, a very good acoustic, uh, which is probably true. The La Villa Tour of Italy Choir is um, comprised of 38 students from our top two audition groups, the chamber singers and the bel canto um, singers. Um, they were selected because of their willingness to um, commit themselves to the trip and to pay for the trip. They come from our top two audition groups. buildings and the food was great. I've been singing since I was, I'd say about seven because in elementary school I started when I was in seven. And um, I just loved it so much I wanted to pursue a career in it. So I came here. I've been singing since I was probably three. I've been singing for one year 
um, here. I've been singing in the Villa Choir for a year now. I've been singing for two years. I've been singing for four year, for three years. This is my third year. My favorite song to sing is Ovos because it's very slow and low and calm. My favorite song that we've sang is Ovos because it's so deep and um, beautiful. I just love it. Well, I'm speaking for myself here, and I'm hoping that, in retrospect, the students will feel the same. But the most exciting part of the trip, the one thing that I'm looking forward to, I think, is our participation in the Papal Mass at St. Peter's Basilica. We will sing in that Mass as part of the Mass, which will be attended by the Pope at 5 o'clock on Wednesday. And we were very fortunate to be able to secure this special time. But I'm most excited about that. And I think in retrospect, when the kids reflect um, on, their, on their trip, they will see that as uh, a very special time also. I'd say I'm most looking forward to singing for, at the Vatican for the Pope because not many people can say that they've done that. So I thought it would be really interesting to see like to sing for the Pope. I'm looking forward to most uh, singing to the Pope and singing in a cathedral because I like to see how different it is from singing over there from over here. I'm looking forward mostly to singing for the Pope and going to a new place. I'm looking forward to most for the sight re er, sightseeing because, I don't know, I just want to see all the wonderful um, old things there. I really want to look see the Vatican um, because I've heard great things about it. I'm looking forward to most probably would be singing for the Pope and because when everybody hears about that, they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that you, that you really are. I'm like, I just can't really visualize it now, but just thinking about it gives me like goosebumps. <laughs> I'm most looking forward to see the Vatican because everyone says it's so beautiful and I can't wait to sing there, so.
am now entering the long gallery, at the end of which is the Sistine Chapel. One of my favorite things I've seen was like the Colosseum and the Sistine Chapel because just all the different artwork in the Sistine Chapel and all the history behind the Roman Colosseum. The most fun part of the trip for me was seeing the Sistine Chapel because I've never seen anything more beautiful than that in my entire life and I really like that. This is a general view which we get from here about the basilica, which, as I said, is not the medieval one built by Constantine, but this is a reconstruction which was done between the 16th century and the 17th century. So as you can see, there is a lot of symbology hidden below the beautiful decoration which we see. And uh, the, um, the inscription is all uh, a celebration of uh, Peter, uh, the apostle who was uh, crucified where is now the basilica and the wish buried below the basilica. The tomb of Peter is exactly below the main altar. So this is the reason why St. Peter is the largest temple in the world, because this is the martyrdom and burial place of Peter. Well, I will walk, of course, we will walk to the altar, but before we do that, I would like to show you the Pieta. The sculpture shows the Virgin Mary holding the body of Jesus. Many scholars have objected from the very beginning that the face of the Virgin Mary is very young looking. But Michelangelo explained himself from the very beginning that he made such a young looking face to emphasize the purity of the Virgin Mary. Surely it's an extraordinary work of art. It's the only one officially signed by Michelangelo. In fact, the Virgin Mary has a ribbon on top of her dress with the Michelangelo Buonarroti written on top. We have only mosaics. We have no paintings in St. Peter's. All the decoration are mosaics. And if you stand where I'm standing, you can perfectly see that that is mosaic. Actually, this is an important one because it's a copy. Can you see? It's a mosaic. It's a copy of the original canvas done by Dominichino, an important artist of the 17th century in Italy. I mean, uh, we, we cannot really uh, uh, access this section of the church as we normally do, but you can see from here better the canopy, you can see the decoration of the dome. Don't forget to remember that you'll be singing tonight next to the tomb of Peter, okay? And do you remember what I told you? The tomb of Peter is below the main altar. We'll be passing by just now the statue of St. Peter, and um, you can see St. Peter as a key, as usual, the key of the kingdom. Not you.
One of my favorite songs are Deep River because it's so pretty and I like the emotion in it. It's been really interesting to sing in all the places I've sang in because um, nobody I know has sang in the St. Peter's Basilica and it's been a really interesting experience for me. My favorite place to sing was in the St. Peter's Chapel or the St. Peter's Basilica because how it's been made and how it's its old structure. Singing at like St. Peter's Basilica and different other places we have sung at it's been really different, but also pretty nice because like for the first time when you sing, you hear yourself echoing back at the end. And it's like just a different experience from singing in a regular theater. It's amazing singing in these old places because when you hear the echo come back, it's just amazing how big they are, that you can just tell how big they are. It's like a new experience for me because I've never d done it like sang in like the Vatican before. I think it's it was very fun. When I was just a child in school, I asked my teacher the question I'll be. Should I be picture or should I sing a song? This was just said to me.
This is the entrance gate here. <laughs> this is so pretty, isn't it? No. Yeah. This is beautiful. This is very pretty. This is pretty soon we are going to arrive at the museum. You naturally leave everything on the bus that you don't need. Try to come light. Brought to the slowing of the works going on for nearly one century and a half. You can see the outside is all covered with the marble, green, white, pink marble. The cathedral, Santa Maria del Fiore, Saint Mary of the Flower, when it was built, was the largest of the Christian world. Today is the fourth. After St. Peter in Rome, St. Paul in London and the Duomo of Milan, and while moving on, if you look at the, on the right side of the cathedral, you can see another beautiful building, the bell tower, Campanile di Giotto. I know Michelangelo, before going to Rome to work at St. Peter Dome, by the way, he was living here. Now we're going to move to the political center. Narrow streets of the past. It's where still we have some of those buildings of the 12th, 13th century. The buildings we call uh, tower houses. 170 tower houses. So you can say it was just a little New York of the past, Florence. Let me know. We're going to move a little bit slowly about the tower houses. Well, this one over here, on the left side, is one of those tower houses of the 12th to 13th century. Hmm? The David originally was outside in Signoria Square, where now you see a copy, the copy of a smaller site. I was told tomorrow you're coming back here uh, to Florence to sing into a nice little church. It's around this area where you're coming tomorrow. Some of the things I'm looking forward to seeing are the the tower, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, just everything. <laughs> just seeing like the sculptures and stuff that people have done, and they they're so old. And just taking pictures of it. The favorite things I'd like to see is the Tower of Pisa, um, and all of the statues and all the chapels, because I'm not Catholic. I'm most looking forward to see the 
Leaning Tower of Pisa because I like heard and seen so many things about it in books and social studies. I think you have already recognized the Leaning Tower. <laughs> it's quite easy, but we also have a splendid cathedral uh, to show you. The round building down there is the baptistry, still used for baptizing babies. I mean, everything you see on the square has still the ancient religious function and purpose. We still celebrate, we still, the priests uh, celebrate the uh, um, service inside the cathedral. We still baptize the babies inside the baptistry. Uh, the bells of the Leaning Tower, because the Leaning Tower is just a bell tower, nothing else, just a part of the cathedral. The bells can still be heard only once a week. We don't want to exaggerate with too many vibrations, uh, could be dangerous otherwise, but they can be heard anyway uh, on Sunday morning before the uh, uh, holy service we have inside the cathedral. You cannot see the banana shape of the tower. <laughs> From this angle it can be seen uh, quite well. But we need a certain distance uh, from the uh, bell tower. Um, let's start from the beginning. Mm, um, the tower, I told you, is just a bell tower. So it was started more or less one century after the cathedral in 1173 by Bonanno Pisano. Bonanno never completed the construction because a few years after the beginning, the tower started to lean. They are the second architect to continue the construction and who tried to balance the leaning of the tower and somehow was Giovanni di Simone who gave the tower a funny banana shape. I mean starting with the third story, uh, let's say where you see now the scaffoldings, uh, uh, from that level the inclination of the tower changes a lot. I mean it's not only leaning, it's also crooked like a huge banana. During the ancient Roman time, the delta of the river was here. So Pisa, in those days, during the Roman time, stood on the water, like Venice. It was a town on islands, uh, and that's why we have um, actually uh, many other leaning buildings on the cathedral square itself. We have a leaning cathedral, we have a leaning baptistry, <laughs> <laughs> the only street building is a cemetery, huh? the cemetery street. <laughs> Otherwise, everything you see on the square is leaning uh, because of the swampiness of the subsoil. Now, I think we can go inside the cathedral. Uh, prego. Allora, first of all, do you like this church? Uh, inside is really, I'm really proud of it, I have to say. It's one of the most beautiful Roman churches that we have in Italy. Hmm? Have you already noticed the ceiling? Yeah. Uh, the ceiling is one of the most impressive things of the cathedral. Uh, the ceiling is uh, made of wood, cedar wood, covered by a real golden leaf. But what should be true anyway is that Galileo used many times the very top of the leaning tower for experiments about the falling weights, the falling bodies, eh? used afterwards by Newton for the theory of the gravitational law. So this should be true, at least. <laughs> This is the traditional shape of baptistries in Florence. The baptistry is eight-sided. This is the only round one and the largest one that we have in Europe too. It's a huge baptistry. Laudate, laudate. Very slowly, much slower, so it doesn't fall over itself. One, two, three, and.
My favorite part of the trip so far has been being in Pisa and seeing the Leaning Tower of Pisa. My favorite song to sing is No No We Still Mean A because I just like how it goes in rounds and when we're singing in these when we're singing in these huge churches, like just the echo comes back and it sounds so pretty. Traveling with my friends in Italy, it's been very cool because you're like around them all the time and you get to share something as big as this with them. It's been really cool because like if I didn't really know anybody on the trip, I wouldn't be having the fun as like I would with somebody I didn't know. So if you don't have friends, you don't have like ex fun experiences. It has been very fun traveling around with all my friends and seeing the pizza and the chapels. Traveling around with my friends is fun because you have people to talk to and if you didn't have your friends here, I mean, it'd be amazing, but I guess your friends add more to it. Well, the most fun part of the trip was just being have, tra traveling with all the people I know from school and having a great time with my friends and just going to see new things. I think it's important um, for our kids to be involved in an experience like this uh, because they need to see the, the role that music plays in, in other places in, in the world and to be a part of that uh, musical experience. My favorite part of the trip was going around and seeing stuff that not even my parents have seen yet and being able to go back and like explain to them different things so like in the first time I can tell them something, teach them something. Rome has been my favorite city because um, 
because it just has so many amazing monuments and it's the capital of Italy, so I think it's really amazing. My favorite part of the trip so far was singing in the Basilica because it was the most hectic day because we were going everywhere and we had like no time, we were rushing and we were singing and it was fun. I think it's going to change my views because I, I can tell people how it's like and like when they go there, I can say like, yeah, it's a beautiful place, you got to go to these places and you definitely got to go to the Vatican. This will impact me in the future probably because later on when I have to take history of Rome and Italy and stuff, it'll be, I'll be able to relate to it and I can also, when I get older, tell my children and grandchildren and stuff. I think I'll remember most, it's probably everything, because it's just all so amazing and I've never gone anywhere like this in my entire life and probably won't again. It's so 